Hi, everybody. Thanks, uh, Yoda. I'm Sanjam from UC Berkeley, and uh, I'm going to talk about cryptography with uh, one-way communication. This is joint work with uh, Yuval Ishai and Yal Kushilitz from Technion and Rafi Ostrowski and Amitsai from UCLA. So typically, noise is something that's uh, seen as a problem in uh, information theory and, and so on. But uh, over the years, we've seen that the noise can actually be a very useful tool in enabling uh, very good secure computation solutions. In particular, uh, Wiener in 1975 uh, showed that you could use noise to, uh, for secure message transmission. And subsequently, a lot of work has gone in, in uh, realizing richer cryptographic primitives, such as commitment, key agreement, and so on. Uh, Kripo and Killian showed that one can use noise in uh, uh, communication channels to realize oblivious transfer, which can then be used to uh, realize secure computation for arbitrary functionalities. And this has been exp ext extended in multiple ways uh, in terms of using different kinds of noisy channels and in efficiency and so on. But uh, much of this work has been restricted to the setting of, uh, uh, to the interactive setting. That is, if, for example, you're in the two-party setting, then both parties must uh, speak. Uh, this work is, is about uh, the setting where there's going to be only one party that's going to speak. So only one party has an input and only one party speaks, the other party just keeps quiet. Uh, and we're still going to be able to achieve secure computation in the setting. So more uh, explicitly, we have Alice and Bob, and Alice has an input X. And she wants uh, to, to, to convey some uh, uh, realized secure computation task in a setting where Bob has no input. Okay? So Bob should just get the output. And we're going to be, this communication is going to be done over a noisy channel, and we're, going to be, and we're going to be interested in different kinds of noisy channels. The three main ones that we're going to be interested in are what I'm going to talk about next. There are many that we consider in the paper, but for the talk, I'll just focus on these three. The first is the binary erasure channel. In a binary erasure channel, channel the sender sends in a bit uh, 0 or 1. And with probability p, it's passed as such. And with probability 1 minus p, it is erased. So for example, if the sender sends in 0, uh, the received bit is, is, is 0 uh, with probability p, and with 1 minus p, it's erased. Okay? So this is a, a very simple channel. And just this channel already has some kind of security property. Just let me explain that. So in this setting, uh, let's say, the, the bit, uh, from the perspective of the sender, uh, depending on the, the random coins of the channel, the bit is either passed or leaked but it does not know whether the receiver received a particular bit or not. And analogously, from the receiver's perspective, it, uh, it either receives the bit or does not. But when it does not receive the bit, then it has no idea what the sent bit was. So even this very simple channel already has some security properties. Okay. The next uh, channel we're going to be interested in is the binary symmetric channel. In this, the sender, again, uh, analogous to BEC, sends in a bit uh, uh, 0 or 1. And the bit is flipped with probability p and passed as such with probability 1 minus p. And just like BEC, we have security properties in the sense that if the, the receiver does, gets a bit, but it does not learn whether the bit is the original bit or the flipped bit. And similarly, the sender does not learn whether uh, the receiver received the flipped bit or the original bit. The third uh, channel we're going to be interested in is the oblivious, random oblivious transfer pro, uh, uh, channel. And it's, this is analogous to random oblivious transfer as we know. Here, the sender sends in two strings, m0 and m1. Now, they're strings, not just bits. You can also think of them as bits. Uh, and the sender puts them in the channel. And the receiver, with probability half, receives m0, comma, bot. And with probability half, it the other probability half, it gets bot, comma, m1. So in particular, in this case, the receiver gets only one of the strings. Uh, and, and the sender does not learn which string it got. So that's the security property that comes with it. So in the paper, we have other channels, but for the, the talk, I'm going to focus on these three, and there'll be some others that I'll mention along the way. So let me move on to our results. Uh, uh, the first step that we wanted to take was to investigate. We have all these channels. We wanted to investigate whether you can use one channel to realize uh, uh, another channel. So if you, and, and, and we do know how to do it interactively, but we wanted to see if we can do it non-interactively. And so we have uh, uh, various results here. The blue lines denote uh, uh, positive results, and the, the red ones denote negative results. So the first, for, uh, let me start with the binary erasure channel. In this setting, we show that it's sort of self-reducible. What I mean by that is that if you started with an erasure channel where uh, the bit was passed with probability p, then you can amplify or diminish that probability to any value of your choice, uh, uh, up to a small uh, error. 
uh, that you can make as small as you, you want. Uh, it, 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 th this is sort of natural and we'll see uh, how it is done later on in the technical part. But what's sort of interesting is that uh, in the interactive setting, all these channels sort of turn out to be equal, are reducible to each other. In the non-interactive setting, they have a very different characteristic. So for example, if you consider the binary symmetric channel, it is both reducible and impossible to reduce. So what I mean by that is that you can start with the binary symmetric channel and you can uh, reduce the, uh, increase the probability with which it is flipped, but you cannot go the other way around. And in fact, we can prove impossibility that you cannot go the other way. Uh, the other sort of main question was, well, we have these, so erasure channel is a generalization of the binary erasure channel you can think of as passing strings and so on. It implies binary erasure channel sort of trivially. So we wanted to see whether random oblivious transfer, which sort of feels more like secure computation, can be realized from any of these uh, channels. And so in this work, we show that all these channels are actually insufficient for realizing uh, this random oblivious transfer, which we'll see has other applications later. We consider other uh, natural channels. I'm going to later talk about busty channel. I'm not going to talk about red blue channel. They, we show that these, uh, these imply the, the, the random oblivious transfer, and this is going to be crucial for some of our applications. Okay. So next, uh, well, we, we studied the, uh, the, the correlation or the, the relationship between these channels. The next question is, well, if we have these, what can we use them to realize different uh, cryptographic tasks? So we show that essentially every channel that we have is sufficient for realizing uh, secure computation for any deterministic functionality. So note that if you have a deterministic function, and let's say I'm Alice, I want to give you f of x, uh, 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 and uh, in the semi-honest setting, I can all, it's trivial to do. I can just compute it and give you the answer, and uh, you can expect it to be correct. So this realizing uh, deterministic functionality makes sense only in the malicious setting, Furthermore, it's only interesting when Alice's input comes from a large space. So let's say the Alice's input was coming from a small space, then I could still give you the output and you could uh, go over all inputs and check if the output is, uh, is among one of those, is in the range of the function. So this is meaningful, for example, in the setting of zero knowledge. Okay, so for zero knowledge, one could ask, can we realize uh, zero knowledge using any of these channels? And our answer is yes. Next, we move on to the, the setting of randomized functionalities where these, the Alice has an input, Bob does not have an input, uh, uh, but the, the randomness for the functionality is going to be provided by the channel. Okay? And this, uh, this is meaningful even in the semi-honest setting because the randomness is coming from the channel and it's not provided by uh, either of the parties. Our results extend to the malicious setting as well. Though. Okay? okay, so let me move on to some of the application. I will give one application for the, uh, the deterministic setting, which is for the zero knowledge, and I'll give one application for the randomized functionalities. So for zero knowledge, uh, the protocol that we have is sort of the first truly non-interactive zero knowledge protocol. It does not require CRS or uh, random oracle model, unlike previous works. Uh, and and the, uh, it, 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 it achieves non-transferability, which previous protocols did not. But we, we do need noisy channels here, so it's sort of, that, that's the, I guess, the caveat. Okay, so the next application is for oblivious certification of cryptographic keys. So let's say we have a company, VeriSign, and wants to give Bob a signature on his public key. So uh, typically, Bob could give VeriSign the public key and, and, and show the secret key to, uh, to show that it's indeed correct, and then VeriSign could uh, give a signature on it. But with this randomized, uh, uh, with this randomized functionality in the noisy uh, setting, what VeriSign could do is it could just send one message to Bob and the randomness from the channel would be used to sample the public key and secret key for Bob and along with generate a signature for Bob. So this gives VeriSign the capability by just sending one message to Bob in enabling him to, to obtain a public key, secret key, along with a signature on his public key, while ensuring that VeriSign does not learn anything about the public key and secret key of, of, of Bob. Okay? So this is, uh, uh, this is something that we can do if we have access to noisy channels. Okay, so now let me move on to uh, some of our techniques. I want to give some idea about uh, what goes on. So let me start with the sort of the, the warm-up example, something very simple, which is if you have a binary erasure channel uh, which passes the value with probability p, then I want to relay, uh, realize uh, a binary erasure channel with probability p, p prime. Uh, and then I want to preserve non-interactivity. So this actually is very, very simple. If you think about the most natural idea, 
uh, I can uh, amplify. So what does it mean to amplify? If I send the same bit twice, then it's going to be, it, it, it suffices to receive only one of them. I can, uh, uh, and, and the, the probability that you will receive at least one of them is going to be more than if I had sent just one bit and the probability of getting that bit. Okay? So I can uh, just uh, repeat uh, it multiple times and this already amplifies the probability with which you get that bit. Analogously, I can also diminish the probability with which you get uh, a value. How do I do it? I secret share, so if I have a bit v, I, I sample two random bits, uh, uh, r0, r1, such that they uh, uh, XOR to, to b, I can send the two bits uh, over the erasure channel, and now the requirement is you can recover b or reconstruct b only if you got both bits. Okay? So I can uh, diminish the probability. We show in the paper that you can take, uh, uh, you can use these two amplification and diminishing uh, uh, again and again to, to, to go uh, as close to, to P prime as you want. So if you start with a channel P, you can get to uh, P prime as, as, uh, as close as you want, okay? I'm not gonna go into the details. Uh, let me mention some of the, okay. So let me uh, now move on to the impossibility of random oblivious transfer from binary radio channel. So this sort of is on the dual side of things where we want to show impossibility of realizing these channels with, with more structure. So what would a, a protocol for random oblivious transfer look like? So let's say we have uh, Alice. She has two strings or possibly bits if you want to consider a simpler case, M0 and M1. And she could uh, potentially encode them you know, using some randomness, what, whatever process she might have, into some bits. And then she sends these bits over uh, a binary data channel, and, and Bob is going to receive some of these bits, and some of them are going to be deleted. And at this point, we want that Bob should be able to use the, the values that it obtained to recover either M0 or M1, uh, both with probability, let's say, half. Okay. So correctness here says that each of M0 and M1 should be obtained with probability half. Uh, receiver security, uh, this is something slightly subtle, that receiver security guarantees that the choice of M0 or M1 that the, the receiver gets should depend only on the choices of the, the channel, not on the choices of the sender. So in particular, when uh, the sender might have multiple ways of encoding this M0, M1 into uh, these bits and sending them over the channel, but we want that any, its random coin do not dictate whether the receiver gets M0 or M1. Because if they did, then he gets partial information on which uh, value the receiver received, which would break receiver security. So in particular, the, uh, the encodings must encode both M0 and M1, and it's only the random choices of the channel that should uh, dictate whether uh, uh, the receiver got M0 and M1. Now this leads us to a contradiction with sender security. The reason being that if it's only the choices of the channel, uh, and if I'm getting M0 with probability half and M1 with probability half, it should be su the probability, the two events are positively correlated. So each bit is, is being uh, deleted independently. Some deletions lead me to uh, this, these, the, send, the received bits to contain information on M0, and the other bits contain information on M1. So if with probability half they contain information on M0, and with probability half uh, they contain information on M1, then uh, uh, hopefully, uh, with the, since they're, 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 po they're, they're both positively correlated, we're going to re the con received bits are going to contain information of bo for both M0 and M1. So this intuition can actually be formalized, and the formal argument can be given using a uh, harris claytman inequality uh, for this. I'm not going to go into the details of that, but you can look at the paper. So some extensions in this setting. So we're able to actually show something stronger. We're able to show that if you take a binary erasure channel with probability, which passes the value with uh, probability p, then it's actually impossible to even realize epsilon uh, random OT, where epsilon is a fixed constant that depends just on p. So regardless of how many times you want to invoke this channel and so on, you will not be able to beat this constant given the parameter p. Okay. Uh, and the result can be extended to general erasure channels where you have uh, erasures being done over strings and so on. We can also extend the result to the computational setting, uh, but we require a, 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 a isoparametric inequality or Harper's theorem for, uh, for this uh, result. The, the result the, these results also extend to BSC, where you cannot realize a random OT, OT out of binary symmetric channel. One difference with the, these, the, these extensions to 
the computational setting and the binary symmetric setting is that here we were only able to obtain losses of one by polys. We were not able to show uh, uh, the, the loss, we weren't able to show impossibility for a constant epsilon, but only one by a poly uh, ROT. Okay. Okay, so next let me move on to uh, giving some ideas about, uh, so this sort of gives you some idea about the positive as well as the negative sides of relationship between different channels. Why non-interactivity makes it hard. Uh, for realizing, for example, random oblivious transfer. Next, I want to give you some idea about how we can use uh, the erasure channel, for example, to realize deterministic functionalities, and I'll show it in the context of binary erasure channel. For binary symmetric channel, it turns out to be slightly tricky, but I won't talk about it. For, and then I'll show how we can uh, uh, realize random oblivious transfer and how that's useful in realizing uh, randomized functionalities. So for deterministic functionalities, it, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's realizing zero knowledge suffices for realizing all functionalities. So this is easy to see. So we have Alice, and she has input x. And if, let's say, she wants to convey f of x to Bob, she can just give f of x. And uh, additionally, if she can give a proof that this f of x computation was done correctly, then she's done. Okay. Uh, and, and we're going to do this by using this tool called oblivious ZKPCP. And this was sort of implicit in previous work by Ishai Sahai and uh, Wagner and, and Aitai. The, it's, it's sort of a zero knowledge PCP with the additional constraint that the, the choices that the PCP verifier, the queries that the PCP verifier looks at are random. They, 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 they're not correlated. Each, he looks at each bit sort of independently and randomly, and that suffices. In particular, if I were to take the, the PCP and I write this uh, and I send it over a erasure channel, this, such PCPs have the guarantee that you know, each of them is going to be soundness hold if, as long as uh, some constant number C of the random locations are read. And uh, zero knowledge holds if each bit is deleted with probability mu. This is sort of very analogous to what we need here. We're just going to take this PCP, we're going to ship it over the binary erasure channel, and uh, we're going to get some soundness guarantees which we're going to amplify by running this thing again and again. So we're going to generate multiple PCPs, we're going to send them again and again, and we're going to amplify the soundness. So just to highlight, in the setting of uh, binary symmetric channel, we're going to do something similar. We're going to send these uh, uh, ZK PCPs over, but then we're going to have some of the bits being flipped. So we'll have to, uh, there would be errors that would be introduced in, in checking soundness, and we'll have to check, we'll have to take into account that there are going to be natural error, errors, uh, uh, and, 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 and so on. I will refer you to the paper for more details on it. OK, so next, uh, let me move on to the final part, where I want to talk about uh, randomized functionalities. And uh, it follows from a previous work of Ishai et al. that it suffices to rely on just this random of Lewis transfer. I won't go into the details of this construction, but I want to give you an example of a channel that can be used to rely on random of Lewis transfer. Okay. So it can be realized from a perfect bus T channel. And what is a perfect bus T channel? So if I have a, uh, if I was to encode my strings m0, m1, if a perfect bus T channel is characterized by two parameters k and b, the sender sends in k uh, strings, and the, the, the guarantee is that among these k strings, a b of them will be deleted, and they will be uh, contiguous to each other. So we, uh, it's an it's a easy construction. I'm not going to talk about it that if you had b greater than k by 2 or b is odd, then it's indeed the case that uh, you can use such a channel to realize a random oblivious transfer. So this is different from just a regular binary erasure channel or erasure channel in the sense that there is a correlation in terms of which values or which uh, parts of the, 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 the sent information are being, uh, are being deleted. And this is what, this discreteness is what allows for enabling uh, random oblivious transfer and then the application to randomized functionalities. Okay. So we consider other channels in the paper which are also sufficient for uh, realizing a random oblivious transfer, but I won't talk about it. Okay, finally to conclude, and uh, some open problems. So we, we initiate the investigation on non-interactive secure computation using uh, noisy channel. We show that the landscape in the setting is, uh, is very different from the, the, the interactive setting. is actually pretty surprising at times in uh, um, the fact that some things are possible for binary erasure channel and then not for binary symmetric channel is, is very interesting. And I think that we have just started to scratch the surface here. Uh, the final goal would be to have a clear characterization on 
uh, for every possible uh, noisy channel as to what it is useful for uh, in, in, in what it can be used to enable in terms of secure computation tasks. We're pretty far away from that. We have only considered specific uh, noisy channels of interest. And the next question would be, uh, can we improve the efficiency of these constructions and realize uh, um, uh, something, you know, right now we just have uh, these feasibility results and uh, can we improve on the number of, for example, if you're using a, 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 a when you're amplifying from binary digit channel from probability P to P prime, What's the minimum number of invocations of the underlying channel that you need to make? Okay, okay thanks. <laughs>